Microsoft announced their highly ambitious device Surface Duo in 2019 fall. It was also the beginning of a great collaboration between Google and Microsoft when Microsoft decided to embrace Android for their mobile platform. Over the last 10 months, Surface Duo was in many different leagues and promotional materials, but at the same time, this kept the tech community guessing on how Microsoft's hardware and Google's software integration will look like. It definitely requires much more optimization to a lot of the applications that can support dual display form factor. This is the only device with dual display that can be used side by side with the help of a hinge system. Considering the design, the app support going to be very crucial for the success of this device. So here is my impressions. The engineering team have done something great with the thinnest frame you will see on any dual display, at least for now. When it's folded at 9.6 mm, it's thinner than any foldable in the market. The build is solid. Glass on both back panels. A hinge system that can hold the screen steady at any angle and potentially address a lot of use cases that may not be in the mind of most of the people who might get the device. We have to hand it to Microsoft for coming up with the design. The hinge is one cool thing, solid and fluid at the same time. It folds all the way around so you can use Duo as a phone with a single screen. But in the same breath, I'll have to say the rest of the hardware is largely outdated and underwhelming. This is the first low point of this device that cost you $1500 to own. At 6 GB RAM for a dual display productivity machine, this device scores very low on the availability of RAM compared to many flagship devices in the market, which costs less than the Duo. We will have to see how it really performs. The device is very unique and also very much a futuristic concept. It will eventually change the way you will interact with your phone. It has the design of a book, very apt for reading or annotating documents and very good for reading books. Depending on your preference, it also opens to the concept of a do not disturb mode. When you close the display, then you are not disturbed by the notification from your personal or professional accounts when your attention is needed elsewhere, unlike those open display devices. Of course, when the notification sound is active, you will know when there is something coming for you. I've been using Surface Duo for the last few weeks and let me share my experience here. When it comes to display, PixelSense AMOLED Dual Display are nothing to rave about, but it does the job. There is no comparison with the superior displays that comes with Samsung's Z Fold 2 or other flagship devices in the market. Single displays at 5.6 inch and dual displays at 8.1 inch. But the disappointment here is the largest top bezels you can find on any latest mobile device, which surely is one of the bad part of the design. But at the same time, this will not hinder you from using those productivity apps you want to use, but not so ideal for media consumption. Coming to the camera, I'm thinking, should I spend time talking about it? Or Maybe should I give you a warning? What was Microsoft really thinking? Even though if you are positioning this device as purely as a productivity device, when I pay $1,500 to buy this, why wouldn't I expect a better camera? It has an 11 megapixel sensor, which is absolutely the worst camera module on any mobile device which is priced upwards $500. You can comment below if you found better camera on those devices below 500 too. I'm sure you can find many such devices with amazing camera. I've captured a few pictures. Definitely I was disappointed. You can decide it for yourself. But one thing is for sure, I will never use Surface Duo for its camera. 
You can use its camera for its video conferencing capability, but not to take pictures of any kind. It has a Snapdragon 855 from Qualcomm without 5G support. Anyway, 5G support is not something that we would look for at least for the next couple of years until it becomes really mainstream. It's almost a year and a half old processor. It's old. In technology terms, it's almost a light year old. But you can use most of the apps Microsoft wants you to use. The processor does its job without any struggle. Just don't bring in some overly graphic games to play. Don't even think about it. 6 GB RAM is surely less than what it's being offered by other flagship phone at a lower price tag. But it doesn't really give you any trouble in loading or reloading your apps. Of course, this is not a device for gaming, so don't even think about it. I have faced no problems to use the apps of Microsoft's and Google's YouTube or Maps for that matter. It has a small 3577 milliamp battery. Yeah, well optimized to last for a whole workday. No problem there. You can be confident for it to last a day without searching for a power socket. One question. Why is there such a stunning diversity of life? One answer. Evolution. The biggest bet of Surface Duo is that Microsoft positioned this as a productivity device. I think that's what it will become eventually when people really start using it. Duo would be more useful for professionals than the regular consumers looking for entertainment and social media consumptions. Overall, the software is buggy. A lot of hits and misses when you tap and swipe. Many times you end up getting frustrated when your tap won't result in action that you are expecting. Some apps may close abruptly some of them won't render properly. Even the Android experience is very difficult to really experience it. Though Microsoft has pushed some recent updates that have addressed some of those issues, but still many, many more issues persist. Not a great user experience for a flagship or whatever you want to call it. So productivity is Duo's best theme here. Ability to have two different apps on each screen and create app pairs to launch on each screen together. Move content from one apps to another. All of these work so well. You might very well be working on Surface Duo in the future. Microsoft has optimized all of their office productivity software to work with this concept. It works as expected. Editing a Word document, writing a mail, or taking note on OneNote are just the best thing you can do on this device. I think that experience is amazing. But at the same time, a lot of other apps that you would want to use are not yet ready for this form factor. That's a big, big problem. If you plan to watch a Netflix movie or a YouTube video on this device, you'll be disappointed. Unless you plan to watch a video on a single screen, it's okay. But the full screen experience is really, really bad. Especially when the hinge comes in between and stares at you. But some third-party apps like Amazon Kindle takes advantage of Duo's unique book design. It's very good to read. It may be surprising if you start reading more books using Duo. I don't know if there was any optimization done, but Kindle is one of the best apps to use on Duo. Period. Even Kindle is not without bugs. So, the big question. Should you buy one? I would say a big no. Reason being, it's a first generation device with lots of bugs and very expensive. But I would be eagerly waiting for the next generation to come before I can recommend Duo. 
just to write emails and working on documents. You don't need a $1,500 device. Then to watch video and capture pictures, there are many great phones at cheaper price offering great experience. If you want to feel the device, go to a nearby Best Buy to experience the hardware and software, how this device have amalgamated Microsoft's hardware and Google software. Gamers won't be able to run their favorite games. No NFC here, no wireless charging, no dust or water resistance, no headphone jack. I know it's not a thing anymore. There are more misses than hits on this one. But it's one of the exciting product of the year. At the same time, like every other Microsoft product, with a more improved software and dual screen app support, Duo will be one to own a couple of years down the line. But of course, I'll be waiting for the next generation. Until then, let's keep the wallet closed, right? Thanks for watching. Until the next video, take care.